Hello and welcome to the Easy Heat Li Quick Start Guide video. First, let's take a look at the packaging. The first box that we see here, which is to the right, contains the Easy Heat Li power supply, along with the manual, which is sitting on the top. And the box to the left contains the Easy Heat Li workhead. So these are the two boxes that you should expect to receive upon ordering your Easy Heat Li. Now let's take a closer look at the contents that were in the two packages. You can see that the work head is on the right, then the power supply is next to it on the left, the manual is on top of the power supply, and to the left you can see the test coil which is all wrapped up in package. You will need to determine the voltage needs of your Easy Heat Li. The input voltage requirements for your equipment are clearly detailed on the configuration label located on either the side or the rear of the unit. This Easy Heat Li requires a three-phase AC main supply for 400 or 480 volts. A 200 or 240 volt version is also available. This particular Easy Heat Li has a voltage range of 440 to 520 volts AC. This information is found on the rear of the unit. For cooling purposes, you will need a water source, whether it be a heat exchanger, chiller, or your own water source. Please note that the water source used with this Easy Heat Li must supply approximately 1.5 gallons, or 5.7 liters, per minute, and have a minimum water pressure differential of 45 psi, ideally between 45 and 80 psi. To prevent equipment failure caused by condensation, the water temperature must be maintained at or above the dew point temperature, but below 95 Fahrenheit or 35 Celsius. On the back of your Easy Heat Li, you will also notice terminals where electrical connections are made for all in and out signals. There is a bag, which you can see on the center of the unit, that contains a resistor. Do not remove this bag. It is for use when using a 4 to 20 milliamp source. Refer to your manual for instructions. You will notice that connections are already made on the back of your Easy Heat Li. Do not remove these connections unless you are making adjustments that adhere to the manual's instructions. Otherwise, your Easy Heat Li will not work correctly. The in-out connector enables you to operate your Easy Heat Li remotely, thanks to signals being provided to the rear of the unit. Additionally, the serial port enables you to control, adjust, and collect data from your Easy Heat Li. For example, eView induction heating software leverages this port. Refer to your manual for in-depth information on the rear panel connections. If you want to simply operate from the front panel only, leave the connections alone. Your Easy Heat Li is set up to operate from the front panel out of the box. Now let's review the tools that you will need to set up your Easy Heat Li. You will need a flathead screwdriver, an adjustable wrench, a Phillips head screwdriver, a 14 millimeter or 9 16 of an inch socket to tighten RF cables, and you'll need the provided 5 30 seconds of an inch Allen wrench to attach the heating coil. Now we're going to connect the heat station to the Easy Heat Li power supply. First, using the Phillips head screwdriver, remove the RF cover on the back of the Easy Heat Li unit. Now that the cover has been removed, we need to loosen the 9 16 nuts on the terminal posts. Now, we need to loosen the RF out cable clamp by turning counterclockwise.
With the cable clamp loosened, we can now feed the RF cables through the RF out cable clamp and connect the X and Y posts on the rear. Now we need to tighten the RF out cable clamp by turning clockwise with a wrench. Now we're going to tighten the 9 16 nuts on the terminal posts. The final step in this part of the process is to replace the RF cover and secure the two Phillips head screws. Now we need to attach the water connections. Locate the three colored tubes coming from the heat station. Now we're going to connect the blue colored tube to the corresponding blue inlet, the red tube to the red inlet, and the clear tube to the clear inlet. Make sure the tubes are connected firmly to the connectors. You can check this by pulling gently on the tubes once they are connected. Now, we need to connect your water source to your Easy Heat Li. The tubing is typically a half inch ID, 3 eighths of an inch OD, polyurethane tubing with half inch hose to half inch stem fittings for the water source. However, we work with the customer to ensure we deliver the proper arrangement for their setup. For example, we supply a hose barb kit if necessary. First, you need to determine your water source. It may be a heat exchanger, chiller, facility water supply, etc. Now we need to connect the inlet of the Easy Heat Li to the supply of your water source by firmly inserting tubing from your supply port into the inlet on your Easy Heat Li. Now we need to connect the outlet 
of the Easy Heat Li to the return of your water source by firmly inserting tubing into the outlet port. Now we need to connect the test coil to the Easy Heat Li. First, insert an O-ring into each recess slot in the face of the heat station. Now, secure the coil with the four screws provided and tighten. Now use the provided wrench to tighten the M5.8 by 16 millimeter brass screws. Once you tighten them, you can finger tighten them and then use the wrenches once again to ensure there will be no water leaks. With that, you have concluded connecting the test coil to your Easy Heat Li. Finally, we need to connect the power to your Easy Heat Li. First, locate the power cord on your Easy Heat Li unit. In this photo, you can see the power cord sitting on top of the Easy Heat Li. Now, you need to determine your connection. It'll either be a plug connection, as you see pictured here, or a fuse connection, as you see pictured here. If you're using a plug connection, determine the proper plug for use with your AC power source. Then you need to attach the unterminated end of the Easy Heat Li power cord to your plug. If you are using a fuse connection, we recommend a fuse disconnect switch. Now first, determine the proper voltage 
and three-phase fuse disconnect switch rating for use in your facility. Then, attach the end of the Easy Heat Li power cord to your fuse disconnect switch. Now, let's turn on your Easy Heat Li. First, turn the power on using the circuit breaker on the back of your Easy Heat Li. As you can see, the display panel will illuminate once your unit has been successfully powered on. It'll just take a moment to boot here. Now the first time you turn on your Easy Heat Li, the factory display settings will appear. However, if your Easy Heat has been previously used, the last set, current level, and user settings will display. So what we're going to show right here is us altering the settings and rebooting the machine and you'll see that the settings remain the same after the reboot. Alright, the machine's booted up and the settings are the same. That concludes the Easy Heat Li Quick Start Guide video. We hope you've enjoyed this training video, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks for watching.